Hi there. Um, my name is Mark Reed. I'm an artist activist, I guess. I do a project called The Illuminator. We project onto buildings. Um, we're propagandists. That's what we do. Um, and I didn't really prepare a statement, um, but I did write down some thoughts, and they're somewhat scattered. Um, I'm thinking a lot about, I mean, I've been watching the sort of shit show that's been going on for the last year, as long as, as well as everybody else, and what I'm struck by a lot is just the confusion, and just like a general state of confusion, my own confusion, and the sort of, a lot of confusion in the air. Like, what is real? Did the Russians hack the election? Did they not? Lynn Greenwald says one thing, Rebecca Solnit says another. Like, I'm just going out of my mind. I have no idea what's going on. Um, and this sort of, not just this, but the sort of general confusion is what in some ways gives space for a demagogue. No one's telling the truth, it's all fake. Then someone shows up and says, here's what's real. Um, and just keeps on repeating that they're the ones that has the answer and that's, this confusion kind of gives room for the demagogue. Um, and the confusion actually extends to our own political organizing, our own political communities. Like, are we suddenly like allied with the CIA and the NSA? Like, is that who our allies are now from the left or are the neoliberal Democrats, are they, you know, the Clintonistas, are, are they our allies now? Um, and I, I vehemently say no to either one of those. And yet the, the sort of terror of the moment creates a kind of panic and a kind of confusion about where, where do we line up? With whom are we in formation? Um, and we need to be in a both um, cognizant of the fact of that strange times make for strange bedfellows and temporary alliances and all that, but not be confused about, um, you know, and not be reactive to every single tweet and every single sort of outrage and sort of um, be somewhat focused on the material realities of what a Trump administration really means, which is not a rupture with the past, but a continuation of the same economic policies. He put Goldman Sachs in control of the government, just like every other administration has. And that's where he's weak, and we lose sight of that with every sort of outrageous disgusting thing that he says, like there's one protest that's been going on for the last few days, it's government sacks. They've been actually camped out in front of Goldman Sachs for the last three days. Um, and I sort of look to um, uh, actions like that that kind of keep the eyes on the prize um, rather than responding to every sort of, um, yeah, disgusting or outrageous tweet. Um, because the crisis that we are facing now is created by neoliberal capitalism. The rise of fascism is, is made possible um, by you know, the crisis of neoliberal capitalism. And like, that is the crisis. The crisis remains capitalism and has always been capitalism. And like, main, maintaining our focus on that. Um, also, the other note I had is, you know, there was, it's been said by a million, other, a million people, but that this was a rejection of elite institutions similar to Brexit. Um, it's also a rejection of left liberal culture um, in a really fundamental way, which is embodied many times by institutions like this, um, like that we're in. A kind of rejection of a left liberal culture that's focused on representation and kind of a politics of manners um, rather than material reality. Um, Sorry, sort of trying to read this. Like, you know, intersectionality that we talk about often ignores like poor white trash. I grew up in rural, poor Maine, um, and I know people who voted for Trump. Um, they're and they're like the group that's easiest for people like us in this room to mock. Like the butt of the joke, culturally, the, the one like, appropriate kind of group of people to like mock and ridicule is the redneck, you know, sort of poor white people. They be, they've become the butt of the sort of left liberal like culture, like Hollywood, New York, etc. And that's a real <laughs> danger. And I think that uh, like not being aware of the material concerns and struggles of, of, of poor people of any color is a real weakness of the kind of our like left liberal culture. Um, and we need to be um, a little bit more attuned to that. Uh, you know, artists work in the field of meaning, of signs and symbols and representation, um, and I think we need to ask ourselves, how can artists, how can we not just be artists, but as people, work at the level of, mater of the material? And like the anecdote I would have is, you know, the one thing I've done that I felt best about in the last couple of weeks was phone banking for my union. I'm an adjunct and I'm a, a member of a union and just like going for two hours and doing the, you know, getting on the phone is like the most awkward feeling in the world, like calling people, doing the sort of stupid grunt work that frankly is almost always done by, like, by women, frankly. Um, but you know, sort of sitting and doing that work, um, like my friend who I did it with, Jeff, he, when we got, when we finished, he was like, 
you know, he was, said he was thinking about what sacrifice means, because we often talk about sacrifice, how we have to sacrifice. And sometimes it's actually not that big a thing to sacrifice. It's just, it's just um, like my awkwardness, you know, or like a little bit of my time, or the inconvenience of doing something. Like going and phone banking is a little bit of a sacrifice. And oftentimes we're, we're sort of wanting to, as artists and oftentimes as activists, we want to kind of do the big thing, do like the big protest. And sometimes what needs to be done is like really humble and simple and, and sort of listening to what's going on in the culture um, and sort of doing what you can. Um, so that, those are my thoughts. Thank you for listening. I hope we hear from a lot of people.